Listen to this. Modern armies spend billions on new weapons, but they're secretly studying designs from a thousand years ago. Far from being primitive, these weapons are the blueprints of modern combat. Their effectiveness relied on mathematical precision and material science that allowed ancient engineers to achieve results we now associate only with high-tech sensors and digital controls. Military archives and archaeological excavations reveal a forgotten truth. The DNA of modern combat engineering was written a thousand years ago. These are sophisticated systems of area denial, fluid dynamics, and multi-stage propulsion. Here's what most people get wrong about ancient warfare. They think it was all brute force and crude weapons. This is a fundamental oversimplification. Chinese military engineers solve problems modern armies still face today. Area denial, continuous flow systems, automated kill zones, multi-stage rockets. These 10 weapons represent a complete engineering philosophy gravity-powered reset mechanisms, continuous flow pumps, controlled fragmentation, staged rocket propulsion, all developed without electricity, computers, or modern metals. The mechanical logic of these ancient designs forms the direct lineage of everything from modern flamethrowers to space rockets. This isn't just history. This is engineering that's still relevant today. We're counting down from 10 to 1. I guarantee the final weapon will completely change how you think about military innovation. Number 10. The Wolf Tooth Striking Board The Langya Pai was the world's first passive automation defence system. By utilising a gravity-powered pulley network, it functioned as a self-resetting vertical minefield, capable of obliterating assault teams and rearming itself within seconds without an external power source. A gravity-powered, automatically resetting vertical minefield. It could crush a scaling party and reset in seconds using nothing but pulleys and human power. Picture this, a 500-pound timber studded with iron spikes. Suspended above a gate, enemy soldiers approach with ladders. Defenders release the mechanism. Crash, the board drops, obliterates the assault team. Within moments, cranks and winches haul it back up ready to strike again. Combat engineers today study this as the first zero electronics active defence. No power source, no software, no maintenance. Just pure mechanical automation that turns a wall face into a reusable kill zone. The genius was in the reset mechanism. While enemies had to regroup and bring new equipment, defenders could reload their trap faster than attackers could reorganise. That's force multiplication through mechanical advantage. But if you think automated defence is impressive, wait until you see a weapon that stays turned on forever without any power source at all. Number nine, the poisonous caltrop. Four iron spikes arranged in perfect balance. Looks simple, right? This simple design is still used by modern special forces today. Here's the engineering brilliance. No matter how you throw it, one spike always faces up. Always. This isn't luck, it's math. The four-sided geometry ensures 100% reliability with zero energy input. Special operations units carry these exact same designs to disable supply trucks. 2,000 years later, we haven't improved on the geometry. It's the ultimate zero energy weapon. Deploy it once and it stays armed forever. But the real genius was psychological. Imagine being an invading soldier. Every step could be your last. The ground itself was weaponized against you. Area denial through pure geometric perfection. Think that's clever? Wait until you see how they turned individual combat into a nightmare for faster, stronger opponents. Number eight, the Langxian Wolf Brush. Picture facing a swordsman who's faster and stronger than you. Your only weapon? A spear with multiple tangled poison branches. Sounds like a disadvantage, right? Wrong. This was asymmetric warfare perfected. While your opponent relied on speed and precision, you turned the fight into mechanical interference. Those branches weren't decoration. They were a trap. Every sword strike gets caught in the tangle. 
every thrust gets deflected. Meanwhile, the main spear tip is free to strike, while your enemy's blade is hopelessly tangled. It's like fighting with mobile barbed wire. Tactical units study this for non-ballistic crowd control. The principle is simple. When you can't match force with force, use mechanical interference to neutralize superior speed and strength. The wolf brush proves that sometimes the best engineering solution isn't elegant. It's effective. Trading grace for control. Turning a single soldier into a walking obstacle. But individual combat is one thing. What about moving massive objects with minimal effort? That's where our next innovation changed naval warfare forever. Number seven, modular naval rudders. Here's the problem. How do you steer a massive warship with just human muscle power? Chinese engineers solved this centuries before the West even had proper rudders. Engineers utilized fenestration, strategic apertures in the rudder blade. By allowing water to flow through controlled openings, they manipulated fluid resistance, allowing a single helmsman to steer a massive warship using a fraction of the physical force normally required. By letting water flow through controlled openings, they reduced the physical force needed to turn the ship while maintaining steering control. It's the same principle used in modern high-performance rudders, managing fluid resistance so a small input can control a massive ship. They figured out water leverage using nothing but observation and trial and error. Today's ship designers still use this exact logic, balanced rudders with trim tabs and hole-filled designs. The physics haven't changed. We've just added computers to calculate what Chinese shipwrights learned through experimentation. This represents a fundamental engineering principle. When you can't increase input force, you redesign the system to require less force, efficiency through intelligent design. But steering ships is nothing compared to our next weapon. It solved the fundamental problem of turning fire into a projectile. Number six, the fire lance. This is where everything changed. This is ballistics point zero, the moment humans figured out how to contain an explosion and direct its energy. Early versions were essentially spears with gunpowder tubes attached. But here's what made them revolutionary. They solved the fundamental barrel problem. How to contain gas pressure, direct explosive force, turn combustion into controlled projectile speed. Watch the evolution. First, they expelled flame, then pellets, then shrapnel. Each iteration taught them more about pressure containment, barrel design, and projectile dynamics. They were writing the physics textbook for firearms. Every gun, every cannon, every rocket engine traces its lineage back to this moment. When Chinese engineers first asked, what if we could capture an explosion and aim it? The fire lance established the core principles, sealed chamber, controlled ignition, directed exhaust. These aren't just historical curiosities, they're the foundation of modern ballistics. But individual projectiles are limited. What if you could fire dozens simultaneously? That's where our next weapon revolutionized volume of fire. Number five, the nest of bees. Imagine a hexagonal launch rack holding 32 rockets, all firing in coordinated salvos. Now look at a modern HIMARS rocket pod. See the similarity? That's not coincidence. The honeycomb layout wasn't aesthetic. It was mathematical. By arranging rockets in hexagonal patterns, they maximized volume of fire while minimizing the launcher's footprint. Maximum damage density in minimum space. But the real weapon wasn't the individual rockets. It was the psychological impact. Imagine facing a wall of incoming projectiles. Even if most missed, the sheer volume would overwhelm any defense. Modern multiple launch rocket systems use this exact same geometry. The honeycomb pattern appears in everything from naval weapons to artillery rocket pods. Ancient geometry, modern application. The nest of bees solved the fundamental problem of area saturation. How do you deliver maximum firepower to a target zone when individual accuracy is limited? Answer, volume of fire through geometric efficiency. But rockets are just the delivery system. The real innovation was in the warheads themselves. 
our next weapon perfected the mathematics of destruction. Number four, the thunder crash bomb. Here's the engineering problem. How thick should your bomb casing be? Too thin and it bursts too early. Too thick and it doesn't fragment properly. Chinese engineers solved this through pure materials science. They calculated the exact relationship between casing thickness, explosive charge and fragmentation pattern. This is the chemistry of shrapnel. Controlled destruction through mathematical precision. These weren't just bags of gunpowder, they were cast iron shells with calculated wall thickness, designed to shatter into lethal fragments at precisely the right moment. Every modern fragmentation grenade follows this same mathematical relationship. Today's weapons engineers use computer modeling to achieve what Chinese metallurgists figured out through experimentation, the perfect balance between blast effect and fragmentation pattern. The thunder crash bomb established the fundamental equation. Casing strength versus bursting charge equals controlled fragmentation. That math hasn't changed in 800 years. But explosive projectiles are single-use weapons. What if you needed continuous sustained firepower? That's where our next innovation changed the game. Number three, the Pen Huo Chi. While the rest of the world was throwing fire pots, Chinese engineers built the world's first double-acting flamethrower by the early 10th century CE. Here's the genius. The Pen Huo Chi utilized the world's first double-acting piston pump. This eliminated the dead time between strokes creating a continuous, high-pressure stream of fuel. This mechanical logic predates modern fuel injection and hydraulic systems by nearly a millennium. No pressure drops. Continuous flow through pure mechanical engineering. This is the physics of continuous pressure that powers modern fuel injection systems, hydraulic pumps, and yes, military flamethrowers. They solve fluid dynamics problems that wouldn't be formally understood for centuries. The double-acting piston eliminated the fundamental problem of pumps, dead time between strokes. By using both directions of piston movement, they achieved smooth, continuous flow. The Pen Huo Chi proves a fundamental truth. When you need continuous output from intermittent input, you need to eliminate dead time in your system. Modern engineers still use this exact principle. But continuous flow is nothing compared to our next weapon. It solved the problem of extreme long-range precision. Number two, the Triple Bow Siege Crossbow. This weapon had sniper-like range, ranges far beyond typical battlefield weapons of its era, hundreds of meters with lethal accuracy. Centuries before gunpowder weapons could match that distance. The problem with single-bow crossbows was energy storage. One limb could only store so much elastic energy safely. Solution? Synchronize three massive bow staves into one frame. Triple the stored energy. The windlass system allowed slow human input to be converted into massive stored energy. When released, all that power focused on a single projectile with devastating accuracy. It was pre-industrial sniper artillery. This weapon eliminated the safety zone for enemy commanders. Suddenly, being far from the battle didn't guarantee survival. It changed the psychology of warfare by making leadership a target at extreme range. The triple bow established the principles of synchronized energy storage and controlled release. These appear in everything from modern crossbows to industrial machinery. But even extreme range precision pales in comparison to our number one weapon. This innovation didn't just change warfare, it changed the world. Number one, the fire dragon the Huo Long Chu Shui. This is the holy grail of engineering. 600 years before modern rocketry, Chinese engineers figured out multi-stage propulsion. Here's how it worked. A dragon-shaped primary stage carried smaller rocket arrows as payload. The primary stage flew first, then ignited the secondary stage mid-flight, extending range by dropping dead weight and igniting fresh fuel. The Huo Long Chu Shui represents the birth of aerospace engineering. By utilizing a primary booster to achieve flight and a secondary stage to deploy its payload mid-air, it solved the fundamental rocket equation of shedding dead weight to extend range, the exact principle used by NASA to reach orbit. 
they solved the fundamental problem of rocket engineering, how to shed dead weight and maintain thrust. The Fire Dragon proves that the principles of aerospace engineering aren't modern inventions. They're discoveries. Chinese engineers found the same solutions we use today because physics doesn't change. This weapon represents one of the earliest known examples of staged rocket propulsion. It's the ancestor of every rocket, every missile, every spacecraft. The engineering DNA is identical. But here's what makes this the number one weapon. It wasn't just advanced for its time. It was advanced, period. The engineering principles are so fundamental that we're still using them today. So there you have it. 10 weapons that prove ancient Chinese engineers weren't just making tools of war. They were solving fundamental engineering problems that modern armies still study today. Look at the pattern. Gravity-powered automation, geometric perfection, fluid dynamics, ballistics, volume of fire, controlled fragmentation, continuous flow, synchronized energy storage, multi-stage propulsion. These are timeless engineering principles. Every modern weapon system uses principles first explored by engineers working with wood, iron and gunpowder over a thousand years ago. From the simplest firearm to the most advanced missile, this teaches us something profound about innovation. The best solutions often come from understanding fundamental principles, not from having the latest technology. These engineers succeeded because they understood physics, not because they had advanced materials. They prove that true innovation isn't about having better tools. It's about asking better questions. How do you store energy? How do you control flow? How do you maximize efficiency? The answers they found are still correct today. The weapons explored today represent only a fraction of a broader military philosophy. Beyond individual armaments lies an entire ecosystem of siege technologies and naval strategies that redefine the limits of pre-industrial engineering. History remains dense with innovations that challenge the narrative of modern superiority. To ensure these lost blueprints continue to be rediscovered, subscribe and activate notifications. Thank you for watching. The most advanced ideas are often those that have already survived the test of centuries.